We welcome every one of you back to this Easter retreat session in Jesus' name. Bow your head wherever you are as we go to God in prayer. Would you like to take a minute to say, Lord, thank you for what you have done for me at the cross. Thank you for the revelation of the mystery of the cross. Thank you for bringing me understanding for the past two days of this teaching brought us deep understanding of what God has done for us on the cross. Would you like to appreciate the Lord for this provision of the cross? Wherever you are joining into this meeting, we'd like you to say a word of prayer now as we pray together. Go ahead, thanking the Lord for the cross. Thank the Lord for the sacrifice Christ made on our behalf on the cross. Will you also present yourself before God this day? As we go into the third day of our Easter retreat, will you bring your heart unto the Lord? Will you ask the Lord? May the sacrifice of Christ on the cross never be a waste on my life. Help me to connect into what Christ provided for me at the cross. I don't want to experience less than the provision of Christ on the cross for my life. Ask the Holy Spirit for grace to experience the provision God made for you on the cross. Nothing less than the full accomplishment of Christ on the cross. May I walk into it. May I experience it day by day. The victory that is mine. All round victory. As you pray for your heart. Pray for yourself. That this will become a reality in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Will you pray for this day? As we take fresh instruction from the Lord, again to take us deeper into issues of the cross, to bring us further light on this matter, to bring us further understanding. These are not popular preaching topics, but the Final essence of our Christian life is actually inside of this. Every other thing is secondary. Lord, give me understanding. Give me further revelation into this matter. Give me help as we go into your word. The truth of your word is all I desire. That I will know for sure all that the cross represents in my life, all that you have done for me, I will walk into it and experience it. Reveal the truth of the cross unto my heart even this day. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us. Wherever each of your children is gathered and hearing your word, let there be a revelation of the truth. Bring us understanding. Bring us your word in its simplicity. Today again, as we sit at your feet, O Lord, may your word become clear to us. May your accomplishment on the cross become revealed unto our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray.
Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us again at your feet that we share your word. The issues you have raised with us in the past two days, as you open in clear terms the understanding of the cross, the secret behind the cross, the process that brought us victory, Lord, we are praying. May none of us experience less than all you accomplish on the cross for us. May we key into this, wherever we are, whoever we are, we ask for your grace, O God, that we walk into this understanding, that this will become the reality of our Christian experience. Have mercy on every one of us. Lord, we pray that our past ignorance will not play against us again. Having gone through this vivid process of what you did to bring us victory on the cross, we pray that every one of us be helped. Holy Spirit, you that see all your children, whom you have mobilized, wherever they are, as they join into this meeting, whichever platform, talk to them, touch their hearts, visit them, grant understanding wherever they are seated, those that are gathered in groups, those that are at home, families that are sitting around your world, Holy Spirit, visit them with understanding. We are praying that today you will take us forward on the issues you have begun, begun to tell us, to share with us, to reveal yourself to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We receive grace even for this meeting today, this third day. Thank you. Lord, one thing we desire is that Jesus will become so outstanding in each of our hearts wherever we are. Quicken our hearts, Lord, that Christ and the cross and all that he did for us, none of us will miss it. We will enter into it this Easter. Thank you, Father. Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, once again, we welcome every one of you joining us on this program, the Easter Retreat, looking at the process that brought us victory. When Jesus said, it is finished, actually it is finished. How can I actualize it? How can I walk into it? How can this become a reality for my personal Christian work? On daily basis is the reason why we are seated together at different points uh, sharing the Word of God we want to thank you so much for being part of this as many as have accompanied with us from day one and day two you can recall all that the Lord began to say to every one of us this third day of the meeting we are trusting that again the Lord using his servant to move us on into the realm of the revelation of the truth of the word of God. Actually, it is the truth of the word of God that brings liberty. When you know this truth, you become free. You never knew that actually Jesus said it is finished. So truly it is finished. But if you don't know the truth, it will be vague. You will still go through the torments of the flesh and the challenge of sin and all that the kingdom of darkness represents in your life. You will not be able to release yourself from it until you know this truth. We thank the Lord for the instruction that came to us. Yesterday, the servant of the Lord, our brother Billy Akoni, began to bring strong issues in 
helping us to discover the process that brought about this. And from Colossians chapter 2, where he began to read, we saw clearly that the cross is where Satan lost his power and he never forgets it. The devil never forgets that he lost something at the cross. So you can see everywhere that the cross has been played down, the cross has been blackmailed, the cross has been pushed out of focus in the church, and the people of God uh, have actually played along with this, not seeking understanding that brings help to realize what Jesus did on the cross. As a servant of the Lord uh, brought a very strong connection between circumcision, a sign of covenant relationship God brought to Abraham, it became clear that that was an external process. But God was targeting a fulfillment of circumcision on the cross of Calvary. And he brought understanding into that scripture to show us that the circumcision that God brought to Abraham when he entered into a covenant relationship with him as a sign actually was a means of bringing all of us who believed in Christ Jesus to be circumcised. The circumcision here was dealing with the remover, the cutting away of the foreskin of our hearts, uh, which is not made with hands, even the flesh. And that became very clear to us that, oh, this is what God is looking for in every one of us. And this is what Jesus went to bring for us on the cross of Calvary. It became clear to us that the flesh, the sinful nature, that has become a torment to everyone born of woman cannot be eradicated by prayer, by preaching, by fasting, or singing. It is only the cross that has crushed the flesh and has terminated its oppression and existence in the life of people. This is what Jesus did. You can only come into this when you understand it, when you believe it, when it becomes a personal revelation to you. Actually, the cross is the sole mark of the Christian experience. It is the cross that crush the old nature, the sinful man, the natural life. And it came at a point that Jesus brought this experience the, the way the devil himself did not understand that this is a target to push him to a corner to push him away from attacking humanity he never understood it until it took place until the cross happened then he realized oh this is a great great challenge for him it is actually targeting his power, his oppressions among people, and actually it brought down defeat. He has played around the cross and made sure that many people do not understand what it is all about. So in the churches, it is not considered as a primary thing. Uh, people talk about salvation, they talk about redemption, they talk about going to heaven, but they don't emphasize the cross which is actually not possible. There's no Christianity without understanding what the cross stands for in every of our lives. As we went through the teachings of yesterday, uh, our brother again raised a very critical matter. Uh, the understanding of the Jews uh, who are looking for signs and the Greeks who seek for wisdom. Say, but we, we are seeking the power of God that is actually in Christ and Him crucified. And He took time to give us a vivid picture of the, 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 
Greek that seek for signs. He talked about scholars and scholarship that cannot deal with sin, even though the scholarship itself is not a problem, but it does not deal with sin. It cannot deal with the devil. It does not actually deal with the world system. It is not by wisdom or speech. It is not by great learning. It is not by academic knowledge. It is by the cross. On the other side, the Jews are seeking for signs and wonders. And a brother gave a critical picture of this, uh, moving from one extreme of the scholarship onto the extreme of signs and wonders, the Pentecostalism era that seek for signs, seeks for miracles, seeks for this. And yet, all this omitting the crucial matter of our Christian faith. Out of the cross, actually, you can encounter signs and wonders. Out of the cross, you can encounter miracles. Out of the cross, many things happen. In fact, everything that God has packaged for the Christian is actually inside the cross. When you get to the cross, the wisdom to prevail on every matter on earth is also located there as you go with the cross. Also, the philosophers, as they subdue the cross and make it appear as if it's just an event and not linking it to the Christian life and the victory that Jesus gave us. Now, the cross brought us greater credentials than the intimidation of the, of the Greek who are seeking for that and seeking for this in the, ten, in the name of knowledge. Now, all we need, brothers and sisters out there, is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ and him crucified. When God introduced the cross in the shadows in the Old Testament, using circumcision of the first king of our hearts. What God is looking for is a man that is actually living a crucified life, coming into that crucified life. That is the fulfillment of that circumcision. The cross terminates the old nature. But beyond that, it also takes away from Satan the power to accuse me. Oh, that is a very critical aspect of our discussion as God helped us last yesterday. Uh, on, the, on the cross, deliverance is compulsory. Not by prayer, not by fasting, not by any other human efforts, but by what Jesus Christ has done for us. Deliverance can never take place outside the cross. Actually, it is part of what Jesus did. The main issue, Jesus went to the cross. Nothing in my effort is not worthy. It's not a worthy replacement of the cross. We label as if the cross has not taken place, as if the cross has not happened, as if Jesus died in vain. It is a return to witchcraft, a return to ordinary life, a return to a life that Christ is not actually involved. Jesus also disarmed, took away all the arms and rendered Satan powerless, a very critical aspect of what the Church of Christ ought to discover that our arch enemy is disarmed. There is no victory by shouting at Satan. There is no victory by making unnecessary noise. But there is victory in discovering that Jesus disarmed. It is not my prayer. It is not my fasting. It is not my preaching. It is nothing else I can do in my efforts but that Jesus on the cross disarmed. These are critical issues for our victory. So I have boldness to move on as I see the Lord exposing the weakness of the devil 
and just to help every one of us discover that we are afraid of the devil for no reason. Simply because of ignorance, the truth of the word of God has not come to us. Brothers and sisters, we are trusting the Lord that this understanding will help your heart. You will lay hold of it strongly and begin to walk in that victory that the devil will not intimidate you again. The devil you are afraid of, we are told clearly, has been disarmed. So when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, actually everything is finished. The power of the devil to accuse me is finished. The power of the devil, principalities and powers to attack me is also finished. There's nothing he can do. Once you come into this truth and stand on the truth of what God said, you walk in victory. Sincerely, you can throw up your arms and say, it is finished because Jesus has done it. We thank the Lord for this opportunity of hearing these things again and again. It's not enough to hear it once. You will hear it again and again. We welcome you to this third day of this Easter retreat. And for those of you that miss the messages, please we are praying that you will catch up with it. You will make time to uh, catch up with the messages that we started this retreat with. Uh, if you call our online number, uh, the brethren will make the messages available to you. It's not enough you listen to it only once. Go through it again and again until you are sure it is finished. Even for you, it is finished by the grace of God who brought us this victory on the cross of Calvary. We are going to continue with the meeting again today as our brother will be coming up again to share his word with us, to share the word of God in this light, seeking that understanding we take hold of our hearts. Bow your heart and pray. Ask the Lord for grace to understand, grace to experience it. Pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you in all this. Wherever you are, ensure you avoid distractions. Uh, those of us that are gathered together, families that are sitting together, friends that are come around together in churches and other places. If you are alone, avoid domestic disturbances and distractions so that you will concentrate to experience what God is calling us into. We thank all of you for coming and we pray that the Lord will help us. If you need the messages that are being played and you want to go through it again, please uh, reach out to us on WhatsApp plus 234-802-168-8883. I take that one more time. Plus 234-802-168-8883. And the message will be sent to you uh, by this means, trusting that you will go through it again. Just before our brother comes up again to share the word with us, as the Spirit of the Lord will guide him, uh, we'd like to take another hymn. Uh, please take note of these hymns as we are singing. We are not just singing songs. We are bringing to our hearts, we are playing the reality of what Jesus did on the cross. You will join us as we sing this song together and sing it from your heart. And thereafter, the servant of the Lord will bring us the word of God. Trophy. 
these at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown for oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark This morning we are going to be deliberately looking at the mystery and the ministry of the cross at work in the life of a man that God wants to use in order to preach Christ and him crucified. Now, talking about the cross, there's so much that several people have either said or understood or propounded about the cross. But this morning, all we want to start doing is to search scriptures as much as we can just to discover what exactly is the mystery and what is the ministry of the cross and what is the power that it conveys into our lives when we bear that cross upon us daily. You will notice that the Lord Jesus Christ insisted that if any man wishes to come after him, if any man will be part and parcel of what he is doing. Let him say no. Let him forget self. Let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. And as we were looking at that, we saw that the Lord Jesus Christ was raising this matter as a precondition, as a prerequisite 
for any man to really, really want to follow him and serve his purpose on the face of the earth. There are a few passages that I would like to uh, refer you back to. We may not be able to study all of them in their fullness, but they give us a pointer onto something that we can begin to hold before we now come to conclude on bearing that cross, living the crucified life from day to day. Now, you remember that when we first arrived, the passage we read was 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Do you remember that? And I said we were not going to peruse, I mean, we're not going to study it in depth. We just want to peruse through it to bring us a welcome. But this morning I felt we should take it a bit more and then pick a few issues out of it as we go ahead. Now, may I first note with you from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you can quickly come to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 and verse 18. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Now, without, without going so far or deep, I just want to first highlight that Brother Paul understood something about the cross, that the cross has power. That there is a power of the cross. And that the cross has a powerful effect that must not be emptied with our preaching. It must not be obscured with our preaching with enticing words that the cross actually has power. I just wanted us to highlight that before we go ahead. We're not yet going to discuss that power. But let, us, let it be settled in our heart that the cross is not a mere thing. And the cross is not an empty symbol. And the cross is not just something we wear on the neck. The cross has power. And that the power of the cross of Christ must not be emptied, must not be made of non effect through sugar coated, eye sounding, eloquent preaching with the wisdom of words. Even though the word of the cross or the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. It appears like foolishness. But to those of us who have been saved, it is 
the power of God. So I'm praying that God will help us as we study the mystery of the cross this morning that you will first of all experience the power that is released from the cross when you encounter it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now one of the things that I believe the devil does not want us to say about the cross that makes him to blackmail the cross. You know that many of us, the way we talk about the cross, we talk about the cross with a basic misunderstanding. For example, if somebody is married and his wife is troublesome, when we want to cancel him, what do we say? Say, that's your cross. That's your own cross. Carry it. Everybody has his own cross. That's your own cross. That's a blackmail of the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is not first of all a problem. Even though the people that don't understand the mystery of the cross they may ridicule us because we are committed to the cross. Yet, I, and they, they may make us to suffer persecution because of the cross. But let me tell you, the cross itself, are you hearing me? It's not just a suffering. It's the power of God. The greatest thing that has happened that has baffled the devil is the cross. He doesn't want the cross to be preached because every time we preach the cross of Christ in his context and in his dimensions, we tell a story of the defeat of the kingdom of darkness and we evoke the power of the kingdom of God upon our lives. Brothers, as I begin like this, I want you to know that we are rafts. You might meet people that think that when we talk about the crucified life, that it's a life of suffering, it's a life that is old fashioned, and that when we talk like that, we are simply just bringing people to poverty. May I say to you that a man that has come to the cross is the only man that has access to the power of God. You want an effective ministry that will affect men in an enduring manner. The power of such ministry is only the power that has emanated from where? From the cross, the cross that has walked upon your life. When you meet prosperity preachers who are dressing big and who are using all kinds of gimmicks uh, to collect money and to make themselves look prominent, you might be mistaken to think that they are powerful. They are not. They don't have power with God. They may have the power of the media. They may have the power of mammo. They may have the power of uh, human publicity. They may seem to have the power of charisma. But when you talk about power of his resurrection, power that takes a man from the kingdom of darkness and positions him for heaven and keeps him going to heaven they don't have such power even though they may gather crowd if gathering of crowd is what you know as the essence of success in ministry I would have been so surprised because the man you Eh? 
that footballer, those footballers. Do they gather crowd more than a preacher? Eh? If that is it. If it's just a crowd, if Ebenezer will come to this town and begin to play his old juju music, what's going to happen? He will carry a crowd. Look at the crowd that used to follow Fela Anikula Kokuti in those days. Even though what they sing is nonsense. But see the crowd. If it is the crowd that is the measure of spirituality, then we will have gone to learn all the method that attracts crowds. But I hear Brother Paul saying, I determined to know nothing among you except Christ and him what? Crucified. They knew that the power of his resurrection is the only authentic power for life and for ministry. But you can never experience power of resurrection if there is no death. You don't talk of resurrection where death has not occurred. Am I right? On the day when Jesus rose, the testimony of the angels was that they told the women, come and see, he is no more here. This was where he was buried and laid. He is no more here. He has risen. If we cannot come to a point and say, come and see, this is where my old life was terminated. This is where my old life, Mr. Flesh, died. This is where it was crucified. And behold, he is no more here. Why are you looking for the dead among the living? If we cannot point to that, then we do not have the power of his resurrection at work in our lives and our ministry. And Brother Paul recognized that there is power of oratory. There is power of eloquence. There is power of public speech that many people used to applaud. People used to clap for. Ah, this man is a great speaker. But Brother Paul said, eh, eh. Such kind of thing, we do what? We empty the cross of his power. So I decided not to do it. I decided not to engage in high sounding speaking, analytical grammar that makes people excited but leaves them deflated once you are gone. Sometimes you are preaching in the church. People will stand up and begin to hold their chair and say, yeah, preach it, preach it, preach it. And the man of God thinks he has already got power. But 10 minutes after that, the people that were shouting, they are deflated. They are going back to the same problem they came with. Because there is no power there. That's not the power that will resurrect them and raise them from their confusion. And Paul said, I have seen the power of the cross. I have seen the power of the cross. It looks foolish to those that are perishing, but to those of us that have been saved. What is that? The power of God. So I just want to highlight that before I go ahead to say that the cross, even though it appears rugged, it sounds foolish to those who are ignorant. It does not appear attractive to those who only have eyes for that which is flashy. But to those of us, it is the power of God. 
It is the power of God. And that preaching, we must never preach in a manner as to rob the cross of his power and of his effect on the hearts of men. So my first submission to you is that the cross is what? Is powerful. Is the power of God. And that those who come to experience the cross, they are also the people who are coming to experience the power of his resurrection. And any power that any preacher wants to have in order to affect men, in order to change them, in order to break the shackles of sin and of the devil from their lives, it has to be the power that emanates from the cross. If it is not, it is going to be a fake power. Can I go away from that point so that we can move on? There are many issues I need to raise, so I want you to come with me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, apart from the first two, three verses, where Brother Paul made it as a personal determination, I determined, I resolved to know nothing or to be acquainted with nothing or to make a display of the knowledge of nothing and to be conscious of nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him what? Crucified. I realize that if it was not a determination if you are not determined to preach the cross, there are many, many synagogue sermons that you can preach. Are you hearing me? If you are not focused on what God called you to do, there are many, 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 many sermons that you can fill your pulpit with. Sermons that doesn't carry anybody anywhere. Sermons that only maintains the audience and keeps them happy for a while but does not make them holy it does not prepare them for heaven and it does not make them heirs of the kingdom disciples who are bearing Christ's life about so Paul said look I could have come among you I could have displayed some other knowledge I could have been discussing other issues but I determined, I resolved to know nothing among you, to make a display of nothing among you, to speak about no other knowledge among you. I determined and I resolved never to be conscious of nothing. I don't want to be conscious whether you are a chief or you are a governor or you are an army general. That's not important to me. Only one thing I determined to know among you. What is that? Christ and him crucified. But if you follow me, now down to verse 6, where Paul began to now speak. He now said, how be it? We speak wisdom. So permit me to note that even though correct preaching that does not obscure or rob or repudiate the cross of its power is not with wisdom of words, is not with eloquent, high sounding speech of intellectualism, we must say that preaching of the cross is not simplistic. Hallelujah. Because you as a preacher, one of the problems you may be facing is that if I'm only preaching Christ and him crucified, if I'm only preaching the cross, 
Will I not appear as if I know nothing? Will I not appear when the intellectuals come to my church? Shall I not display to them how much Greek I've studied? How much philosophy I've gone through? Will I not appear as a simpleton? Someone who does not know something, shouldn't I show them how much English I also know? And you know how intimidating it is. That sometimes you come under the influence of these uh, eye sounding preachers. And you start being ashamed of yourself. And you start saying, God, I don't know why my own message is always just this simple about Jesus Christ and about him crucified. Why can't I talk about high sounding something? How can I, you know, a man of God came and said, uh, let us do exposition about, uh, about the beards of Aaron. The beards of Aaron. That when the it's like the dew, it's like the dew of Ammon that pours upon the head of Aaron and goes upon his bed and he went to the skirt. Hallelujah. The beds of Aaron. You know, when somebody is saying something that looks so high sounding, you say, Wow, is there something in the bed? Of the high priest that I have not known. No, let's sit down and take a very serious exposition. Nonsense. Nonsense. You that you have not known enough of Jesus. What do you want to know about Aaron? Whom God has discarded. Aaron expired before he died. And if the priesthood of Aaron was useful there will also be a need to set up another priesthood after another lineage. So let me say that even though the preaching of the cross that releases its power must not be robbed of its effect because of eloquent, eye sandy intellectualism. I want to say that the preaching of the cross is not simplistic. It is actually, look at what Paul said in verse 6. Yet, among the, the mature, we do what? We do what? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes knew. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have done what? They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Brothers, the cross is the strategic mystic wisdom of God. The cross is the strategic I say mystic but I would have loved to find a word to say it's a mystery. It's something that baffled the devil. The devil did not know what God meant when he introduced the cross. If the princes of this world had known, what did the Bible say? They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I want you to know that the cross is the mystery that God kept. It has been established from before ages. It was ordained for our glory. So let me inform you now that the cross is a mystery that God ordained for our glory. So when Brother Paul said, God forbid 
that I should glory in anything except the cross. I want you to know that when your eye is open to see the glory and the mystery of the cross, then you will know that the cross actually was what God ordained for our glory. Sometime, sometime, when my eyes suddenly see the victory that emanated from the cross, the authority that came from the cross, the anointing that is released unto a man's life because you have come to experience the cross, the release, the supernatural uplifting that comes to a man's life because the cross has crushed Mr. Flesh from his life and the cross has opened the gate unto the flooding of the very life of Jesus into our hearts. I have no other reason to be excited. I'm excited. And I would like you to see that quickly because all of these they are just first issues, background issues for us to come to where we need to go. The crucified life. Preaching. The crucified Lord. The crucified life. But I want you to first note all of this before we draw the application of it on our lives and on our ministry. He said... The cross is a mystery. Is the wisdom of God. Is the hidden wisdom of God ordained before the ages for our glory. Which the princes of this world did not know. The, when we say the princes of this world, whom are we talking about? The principalities and the powers, the rulers of this present darkness the God of this world, if they had known it, they would have done everything to avoid the cross. Unfortunately, they thought that the cross was going to terminate Jesus and that they would disgrace him and that they would discredit him. And they were wondering why he who is the son of the living God was mute and did not speak. He was dumb like a sheep before his shearers. They were wondering. Even Pilate was surprised. The thief on the, on the left was surprised. Everybody said, ah, if this man is a, he's the son of God, why should he be allowed to, 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 to be crucified? How is the son of God? Let him come down now. And, they, and Jesus kept quiet. Jesus kept quiet. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey. I know that the kingdom of darkness, they couldn't understand. At first they thought they were winning. They thought they were gaining ground. They thought that we have finally finished this man forever. They didn't understand the wisdom of God. Let me show you that wisdom very quickly. Very quickly. Before we move to the next. Can you go back to John chapter 12? John 12. John chapter 12. Please. Move quickly to verse 30, 31. John 12. You know in John 12, that was a very, very uh, difficult but interesting passage where people came from everywhere singing Hosanna in the highest. Do you remember? And how some Greeks came, even great men of wisdom, they were coming now and they went and met Philip and Philip went and told Andrew. And they said, sir, we will do what? We will see Jesus. 
And that was the height when Jesus was riding on the ass and everybody was singing, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the... You know, it was looking like the climax of Jesus' ministry on earth. And do you remember how the Pharisees and the scientific council were biting their tongue and saying, wow, <laughs> you see now, the whole world has gone after him. Hey? We tried to finish this man, we couldn't finish him. See, everybody is singing about him. Out of that annoyance, they came out. They saw all the children, all the women, those that carry palm from, those that carry their air tie, those that carry leaves, and they were, you know, put everywhere on the road. They were so annoyed. They said, keep your mouth shut. Why are you singing like that to this man? Stop. And Jesus looked at them and said, even if this man were to shut up their mouth, Stones, stones, uncountable number of stones will jump up and praise me. But you see, at that point, listen to me, this is the mystery. The people say, We will see Jesus. And Jesus, at that point, in chapter 12, Chapter 12. You know, I wanted you to read verse 30, but I want you to read verse 23 now. Jesus answered them, saying, The hour, did you see? The hour is come that the Son of Man should. Did you see the word should? This is the hour that the Son of Man should be glorified. Do you know the meaning of the word should? Eh? What would have been the difference between should and shall? If I said the hour has come when the Son of Man shall be glorified. And the hour is come when the Son of Man should be glorified. What's the difference between those two statements? If I say I should be glorified. I shall be glorified. What's the meaning of that? Which means this is what ought to have happened which will not happen. When he said the hour has come when the Son of Man should be glorified, it means this is actually the hour that I ought to have been glorified. But it will not happen now. Did you understand that? If he said the hour has come when the Son of Man shall be glorified, what would that have meant? It means it's going to happen now. So I saw Jesus at the height of worldly glory, at the height of worldly applause. Which if you don't understand, you will say, yes, this is the climax. But Jesus saw something else. And what he saw was in verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless or except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. What does it do? It abides alone. But if it dies, what does he do? He brings forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. 
The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Are you there? Now shall. Did you see the careful use of should and shall? Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I, I, if I be lifted up from the, from the earth, what will I do? I will draw all men unto me. This is said, signifying what death he should die. Did you understand that passage at all? Eh? You don't. That you see, the cross... Jesus could have gone to heaven without passing through the cross. Eh? But he would have been alone. He would have been the only one. But if he was going to bring many sons unto glory, if he was going to have plenty much fruit, what must happen to that corn of wheat? It must die. And God said to him, look, this is the hour. You should be glorified now. And it is your right. But, here is the cross that will do something that will cause you to draw all men to yourself. That will bring many more sons to glory. That we finish every tyranny of Satan over mankind. Can you make a choice? Whether to go there or to come up. And the Bible says, Jesus, seeing the glory that was set before him. What did he do? He endured the cross. Despising the shame. Permit me to tell you, brothers and sisters, and this is very important for us to catch what is the mystery of the cross. You see, the cross, I'm first talking about that of Jesus before I will talk about my own cross that I must be carrying every day if I'm also going to be relevant in the purpose of God. The cross was that instrument to bring this corn of wheat to death. In order that it might bring many, many, many sons unto glory. And so Jesus said, it's okay, it's okay. Except the corner of wheat falls to the ground and dies. I, I, I'm not sure the Greek that wanted to see Jesus, that sent Andrew and uh, Philip to go and see him. I'm not sure Philip and Andrew went back to tell them anything because what they heard Jesus say was baffling to them themselves. Am I right? Eh? Say, oh, sir. Some Greek want to see you, sir. And the master said, the hour actually has come when the Son of Man should be glorified. But very liberally I say unto you, unless the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it falls down and dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall lose it. If I should love my life now, as to preserve it, I will lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life, he shall have it. If anyone follows me, let him follow me. If you want to serve me, follow me. Hey, brother, do you want to serve Jesus? Follow me to the cross. 
Follow me to the place of death. Only those who allow their lives to fall down and die can multiply. Only those who will allow the cross to crush them as if it's going to finish them. They're the only people that can bring many, many others to the kingdom of God. Do you want to serve Jesus? Let me ask you, how many of you want to serve Jesus? Let me see your hand again. You really, really want to serve him. And you want to serve him effectively. Eh? Then I ask you, follow me. That's what Jesus said. Follow me. Where I am, there my servant be. And the one that serves me, him, my father, will do what? We honor. And you know from that point, he didn't elaborate beyond there because he was going to face this matter. But you see, as soon as Jesus agreed, he said, for this hour, I came. What should I say? Father, save me from this. I say, eh, but for this hour I came. This is the main reason why I came to the earth. I came to come to this point of the cross in order to deliver men from every power of darkness. Are you with me to this point, brothers? We are coming gradually. So when Jesus Christ said, Father, Glorify thy name. I'm going to face this cross. I'm going to face this death. But you will not leave my soul in hell to see corruption. And the father said, I have both glorified it. And I will glorify it again. Brother, if you accept... To come to the cross and to ag ag agree with the crucified life there's a glory before you if you agree that death will walk in you there's a glory that you will begin to enter into not only the glory of going to heaven by the grace of God, even here on earth, you will start seeing the glory that the cross releases on the men and women that decided to bear it. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Do you think I can go ahead? So Jesus made an announcement in that verse. And I want you to have a bit of insight to that quiet announcement when the master said now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw some men I will draw many men what did he say? All. All men unto myself. And that which he said there, so that you will not, you will not misunderstand it, he meant the death that he should die. The death of the cross. When Jesus Christ agreed to go and taste death for every man, he has gained the authority to draw all men to himself. That me and you are sitting here and that we have been given the apostleship to call all men from all nations unto the obedience of Jesus Christ was because of the cross. So permit me to say that the cross was what authenticated the authority of Jesus to call all men to God. It was because of the cross 
when he had gone on the cross and he had you know finished on the cross and he had he had now been raised god now said all authority in heaven and on earth is what is given to you i don't know how to put it to you brothers and sisters authority for ministry authority to call men to obedience is always the authority that comes out of death so you know why baba okafo read uh, philippians 3 this morning for us and he came to that verse 10 3 10 and paul was saying something that looked so strange he said my determined purpose is that i may know him that I may be a partaker of his suffering. That I may be made conformable unto his death. Eh? And that if possible, I might share in his power of resurrection that lifts me up from among the dead. If somebody will help me read that passage, Philippians 3, verse 10 and verse 11, but this time read it for us. Someone with Amplified Bible will also help us. For my determined purpose, that's aha. Amplified. Yes. That I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with Him. Yes perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders, wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. Uh -huh. And that I may in that same way come that to know way. the power at flowing from his resurrection. The power at flowing out of his resurrection. Uh -huh. Which it exerts over believers. Uh -huh. And that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death uh -huh. in the hope. In the hope? That's first. Go on, go on, ten. go on. You know it has not finished. That the hope if that possible, uh -huh. I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that leads me out from among the dead, even while in the body. You see, I can't understand the kind of prayer this brother is praying. The kind of desire that he was looking for. The level of understanding that God had granted this kind of brothers. He said, look, I know that the authority that emanated from Christ's resurrection is the one that gave him the keys of hell and of death to call men and to draw all men to himself. If I were to walk in that footstep of Jesus, if I also become conformed to his death, if I also share in the kind of suffering that he had, if I also experience the death to self by any means, I also, I may attain into that kind of resurrection power that exerts over believers. That I also come to that resurrection that leads me up from among the dead even while I'm still in the body. So you know, he wasn't talking about when we get to heaven. He was talking about a life that exerts spiritual authority over men. Not by shouting. How can I become a man that when I speak the word of God, men will be irresistibly drawn to God? That 
even if you don't like me, you cannot ignore what I'm saying. Even if you decide to block your ears, your heart will pierce. Because there is an authority flowing. But that flows out of the crucified life. I recommend brothers to you that rather than going up and down looking for money for ministry, rather than going up and down looking for posters to print, rather than writing letters here and there and say, come and support us, I recommend that let's go to that place. Let's go to the cross. Let me recommend that you should come with me because I'm also going there. I have found that that's the only place I can remain all the time. I want to be a man who carries nothing but the crucified life. The crucified life has authority. Authority to bear upon the hearts of men. Authority to subdue the hearts of men and draw them to God. If we are going to make disciples for God, we need an authority of life that is magnetic, that compares obedience. As the Spirit of God walks in a man that has been broken, the life of Christ is being released to draw men to God. So when Jesus said, now is the judgment of this world, that's the next point I need now to raise. Apart from that, Jesus said, I will draw all men. That the power that comes out of the cross gives him authority to draw men. Authority in heaven and on earth to draw men. To make disciples of all nations. He didn't come by any other means. He came out of death and his resurrection. And those of us who want to preach to see souls saved, to see men converted, to see men, no matter how high they are in the world, when they come face to face with you preaching the word of God, they melt. They forget their position. They crawl to the altar and say, my heart has been torn apart. What must I do to be saved? I know you like that kind of ministry. Do you like that kind of ministry? Eh? Not a beggarly ministry. Not a ministry when you stand and say, uh, you talk, talk to and say, you know, man, I want you to help me. Don't disgrace me. This thing that we are building, we have to finish it. So do your, do your utmost to assist us. Eh, chief, don't forget us. Eh, please. It's a long time you came to church. I wonder whether I have offended you. Eh? Please. And if I've offended you, please pardon me. You know, I'm a young man. I may not have experience. Eh, don't leave this church. It's your church. Eh, please assist us. And then the man put his hand in his pocket and said, huh? Yes. You are now reasonable. When you first came and you are shouting, 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 we said, maybe he didn't know. Now I'm happy that you are learning. Huh? All right. Next week. By next week, I would ask them to send a trailer of cement uh, to the site. And I'll follow it up with 500,000. Ah, then you almost prostrated, even with your cassock. Can you imagine that? Having been robed to serve God, I see you prostrating. 
for an uncircumcised man because of his pocket. What is the problem? You may say, but what can we do? What can we do? Come to the cross. Come to the place where the power of God is released over a life that has been crucified. Come to that place. That's where the power of ministry is. That's where the power that convicts sinners come from. And that's where the power that draws men and attracts them and keeps them following. That's where it comes from. And I do, I do recommend to you this morning as I have embraced it from my own heart that God, I will not stop coming to that place. I will not stop pressing to that place. I have come to know very, very clearly now that when you have come to that place and you keep getting there, people will hear about you. Demons, they will be told that there's another man there who is, who is pursuing this power of his resurrection. We fear him. Let's do something to quickly get him out. I pray that you will come to the place where God releases genuine authority over the lives of his servant. Hallelujah. Now, I withdraw all men. But now I want you now to see that statement said, now shall the prince of this world cast out. It was because at the cross, Jesus did not only finish with our old nature, Mr. Flesh, that is the internal obstacle to the move of God. The cross also dealt with our external adversary, the devil. Please get what I'm dealing with. I said the cross, what did he do first? It dealt with Mr. Flesh. Those that belong to Christ, what have they done? They have crucified the flesh with his passions and desire. And as the cross is working internally in each one of us, we will be reading that when I come to the application. We will need to read that because it's a very important part of our study. As the cross works internally in each one of us to release the life, the crucified life, I want to also say now, the cross has also worked externally on our external adversary, even the devil. Look at the Bible very well. If you move out of that John 12, which even if we did not have another scripture, we would have settled there. But God has given us other scripture that could help us so that in our study, we can have a wider context. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. I have skipped from verse 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, which was dealing with what we have been talking. But verse 14 now. For as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, who is that? Jesus also himself likewise took part of the same so that you will see the word that did you see the word that eh? other version may say in order that another version may say so that eh? thank you sir that through death He 
might destroy him that did what? That had the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Did you understand that verse? Eh? That Jesus Christ in the same manner took part of the same nature that we carry flesh and blood. But he did this so that through death and which death? The death on the cross he might destroy him that had the power of death. Who is he that had the power of death? Do you notice that the word of God is very interesting? They did not say uh, that he might destroy him that has Can you check your Bible that they didn't use the word has? What did they use? Had. What's the meaning of had? Past perfect. He used to have power. But can I tell you, now now is the prince of this world cast out. The power that he used to have at the cross, what happened? Finished. Brothers and sisters, when you come to the cross, you have not only come to end the weakness of the flesh that keeps confronting us day and night. You have also come to enter into the victory that Jesus Christ acquired for us over the devil that used to have the power of death. So as we are talking now, sir, because of what happened at the cross, Satan no longer has the power of death in his hand. Am I communicating? And that because through death Jesus destroyed him that had the power of death and has delivered us who because of the fear of death were subject to bondage all our lifetime. So you see the cross the mystery of the cross is that actually when Jesus went to the cross and he said it is finished we could just settle down on that word it is finished and begin to ask what was finished and then we start looking at what was finished the enmity between us and God finished Mr. Flesh that never allows us to walk with God finished the devil who had the power of death finished the veil eh, that stood between us that made the way into the holiest of all inaccessible what happened at the cross finished At the cross, the old natural life, what happened to it? Finished. At the cross, even the accusations or the record of deaths that the devil had been compiling against us that stood contrary to us that blocked our way for making progress. What the Bible say happened to it at the cross? That it was discarded. It was annulled. It was, it was put away. Nailing it to his cross.
Every time I have to preach Christ and him crucified, Satan gets very confused and depressed. If he could stop my mouth, he would like to. He said, why do you always talk about my defeat? Why do you capitalize on reminding the men, these people, that I don't have the power again? Why do you always want to preach the cross? Talk about money. Tell the people to come and look for money. Yes, since money is in my hand, at least I will be more important. Tell them about death, about the fear of death. That if they don't come for deliverance, they will die. So people that are preaching demons. Eh? People come to your church and the only thing you tell them is about the witches that will not let them be promoted. You have not told them of the man of Calvary. You are a servant of Satan. People come to your church, they become more conscious. They become more fearful. They forget the man of Calvary who died for their sake. Because you've not preached Christ. You've preached about the, your mother-in-law that has decided to pluck all your eggs. And that the last time you went home, when your mother-in-law came, do you remember he put a hand on your stomach? That was when she removed all your eggs. And before you know it, that sister began to hate her mother-in-law. The Bible says, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. That one is, has no eternal life actually. So when they are ready to pray and say, oh God, even my mother-in-law, kill her. How can somebody pray that kind of prayer, go to heaven? All such preachers, they are servants of Satan. They are not preaching the man of Calvary. And Satan is happy for that. Satan will gather more people there. You see them going up and I say, hey, you have not yet prayed for me. You've never prayed for me. Hey, hey, please, oh, please. Oh. Hey, they say, I will not make it. I will not make it. They say, okay, don't worry. Seven days, seven days, seven days. Why fasting? Yes. The woman said, hey, I've never known white fasting before. Which one is white? Which one is red? Which one is wet? High sounding nonsense. Just to confuse. When the woman started shivering, she said, okay, don't worry. Uh, that's why we are here. I said, God has raised me up to do such kind of all manner of fasting for your deliverance. The only thing you need to do, just provide something for the man of God to open his mouth that's all you need to do you know God 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 raised us here for you and there's no problem yes but 7 p.m. every evening come for prophetic declarations prophetic declarations what's the meaning of that what does that actually mean in the New Testament faith that you have been called to preach. Except that you want to say something that makes you look important. So that people can also fear you. So that when you can say, Man of God, Man of God, Man of God, Man of God, Has Man of God bless you? Has He bless you? So, no, He has no attempt to come on my way. Oh God, I have been coming for four days. The Man of God has not even attempt to pray for me. <laughs> So they're even paying bribe to someone else so as to connect with you. 
What ministry is that? My brother, when the cross came, Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. Is that what the Bible said? Please read it. Read Colossians 2 very quickly and read verse 14. Colossians 2 and verse 14. Once I finish now, I will now move back trusting God that we will be looking at the application, the crucified life. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Against us. Which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way. He took it out of the way. Kneeling it to his cross. Did you see that now? All ordinances. All ordinances that was written against us. All those ancestral spirits, all those ancestral ordinances. I don't know whether you are hearing me at all. All the causes that somebody said they place on your great 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 grandfather when you come to Christ and when you come to Him crucified, all ordinances. All arrangements that stood against you that were contrary to us. What did Jesus do to it? He took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So when we preach Him crucified in that message, are you hearing me? Every deliverance was settled. When we preach Christ and Him crucified, I want you to know that every covenant made by the living or by the dead with whatever blood it was made at the cross what happened to it? It was nullified taken out of the way nailed to the cross no man can come to Christ and him crucified and go away in bondage if he was properly preached if we actually brought men to meet him and him crucified you will have seen that there the people will be walking away in liberty even when the people will gather in their confederacy as Isaiah 40, 54 said in gathering they will gather but it's not by me when they gather and they are beginning to look for the weapons that they are fashioned against the child of God what did the Bible say it will not do it shall not prosper you know why he said for me is their righteousness where was that righteousness coming from? From the man of Calvary. It is at the cross that his righteousness was imputed to us. So God made him who knew no sin to become sin eh, for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Where did God make him sin? Who knew no sin? Where? At the cross. If we will preach him crucified, I want to inform you, in preaching Christ and him crucified, there is all sufficiency to meet the need of everybody. But something I've told you, that yeah, we can only preach uh, the crucifixion of Christ during the Passion Week. And when we finish that, we say, okay, let us now face reality. Those of you, you have been working. They have not promoted you. 
and you are wondering why there is a confederacy that was caught that you will never be promoted and at the beginning of the month when your star was about to come out somebody programmed your star see what you are preaching now you are now a stargazer So you now said, new moon prayer. New moon deliverance prayer. Yes, sir. Everybody that has programmed your star, carry ka ba 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 Then your church member said, amen, 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 amen. And you are thinking you are a powerful preacher. You are a preacher for Satan. If we don't call it like that, you may not know. Anybody who obscures Christ and what he did at the cross is an enemy of the cross. Anybody who occupies the pulpit and will not point men to the man of Calvary who died and rose again for them and was pointing to stars, new moon, into things that you don't understand the Bible said let nobody sit on you in judgment over food and drink new moon Sabbath for the substance is Christ these are all shadows how could you be pointing men to shadow and you have left the substance Such that our church members, though by notional confession, they are Christians, but they are idol worshippers in their heart. They know nothing about the salvation, the true salvation. Because what we occupy them with week after week, week after week, week after week. There are these irrelevances that the cross finished. Are you asking, if I preach Christ and Him crucified, will my church members be prosperous? Yes. Say so this book of the Lord will not depart from your mouth. Eh? Then you will have good success. And you will make your way how prosperous. Baba, you have not finished reading. You read up to verse 14. I want you to go to 15. Yes, sir. And having spoiled principalities, having and powers, spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, uh -huh. triumphing over them uh -huh. and it in the cross. Thank you. Let no man. It's okay. I, I know you want to read let no one. And that's verse 16. Where we are saying let no man therefore rob you, defraud you, judge you. Say new moon, new moon, new moon. What is it? I see so many young preachers of nowadays. Some are carrying sand, sand to the church. They carry sand. Say, go, go, go and bring the sand from your father's grave. What do you know? What do you, what do you know that means? That's witchcraft. So you move up and down, move up and down. The blood, the blood, the blood. Maybe you get, go and get black currant and put as well, carry that sand now. Scatter it, scatter it. As you are scattering it. Everybody who sat on your destiny, they are scattered. That's witchcraft. That is what? Witchcraft. That's not the word of God. That's not Christ and him crucified. Sometimes you say they should go and bring ashes. Ashes. So when they bring it,
How could you not blow ashes and it will, it will scatter? And it blew everywhere. And then everywhere I say yes. As they are flying everywhere. That's how your favor will fly everywhere. That's witchcraft. Witchcraft. Why do you think I need to talk about this today? Because even those of us in the mainline churches, you are being tempted. Because a desire to gather crowd, you are saying these are the things our people are going to learn there. Let's, let's do it for them here. No, 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 no. You don't learn bad manners. Christ and Him crucified is the sufficient message to deliver men and to set them free. Hebrews chapter 8 said, Of all that we have said, Christ is the sum of all things. It is God's answer to every need. And when He says it is finished, actually all sufficiency is in Him. Praise the Lord. Are you with me to this point? Now, we could go on and on and on looking at the cross, the mystery, and the ministry of the cross. But I don't want to leave it hanging like that. It must come to you now. We have to now look at what does that imply for me, Brother Billy? who is living in the 21st century called to preach the gospel how does that now come upon my life now we'll read the next few verses of scripture that we'll deal with and it will give us a hook for the continuation of this message tomorrow now turn now to Galatians you know we read Galatians chapter 5. You remember? Right? We read Galatians chapter 5. So I want you to go back to Galatians. We read Galatians 5 verse 24. But now we will now come back and read Galatians 2 and verse 20. And see how the Lord leads us. Galatians 5 24. We just mentioned it to remind you. But Galatians 2 20 is where we are going to read now. Galatians 5.24 says, And they that are Christ's, they that belong to Christ, what have they done? They have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. How does that work out? Chapter 2, verse 20. Let's go with me to Galatians 2 from verse 20. Are you there? Okay, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. I I'm crucified with Christ. ESV, New King James will say, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Brothers, let's catch what we are now talking about, the crucified life. I have been crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I am walking up and down. Nevertheless, I live. But did you see the next word in that Bible verse? What is it? Yet, not I. Yet, not I. 
But who? But Christ lives in me. We need to study that verse 20 very carefully because it's now going to give us the platform for bearing this life, this crucified life about for all that God will have me and you do in the ministry. But I decided to say for what God will have me and you do in the ministry. But I would like to have said for what the Lord God will have you do in life. That you see, the cross that has, that has come upon our lives that has brought us to the experience of death and deliverance. This is not an historical cross. Praise the Lord. It's not something that happened and we have forgotten it. It is that which continuously releases Christ's life but within us. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lives where? Well in me. And the life, look at that scripture now, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can we please take that to read from other versions that we might have very quickly? Yes, sir. Good news. If you are reading good news, you have to read from the last line of verse 19. Okay, sir. The last line. I've been put to death. Yes. With Christ on his cross. I have been put to death with, with Christ, Christ on, on his, his cross. cross. Hey, brothers, wait. I want God to settle that with me and you. That for us to live for God on earth, the life, the natural life, the human nature that we carry has to come to where? The cross. To the cross. I have been put to death. Yes, sir. Go on. So that it is no longer I who live, uh -huh. but it is Christ who lives in me. Wow. This life that I live now, uh -huh. I live by faith in the Son of God, uh -huh. who loved me and gave his life for me. All right. Are you following something there? Eh? Please, brother, repeat that verse. I will ask you to stop at the right point. I have been put to death with Christ uh -huh. on his cross. Yes. So that it is no longer I who live. So that it is no longer I who is living. Uh -huh. but it is Christ who lives in me but it is Christ who lives in me let's stop you there any other version that somebody will help us read let's, okay, let's begin with new living translation verse 20 I have been crucified with Christ I myself no longer I myself no longer live I myself no longer live. May God, may God give you that testimony. Amen. But Christ lives in me. Let's, let's wait. Okay. I pray that you can read the scripture very well. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. I myself no longer live. I myself 
no longer live. I'm no longer the one who is preaching. But who? But Christ does what? Lives his life in me. That's one of the greatest exchange of the cross. When the cross took place, it took down our old nature. It took down the man we used to be. So that it will no longer be I who is living, who is running up and down. But who? But Christ who lives in me. Thank you, brother. Wait. Do we have contemporary English version? Or is it to read? What are you reading? Easy to read. Verse 20. I have been nailed to the cross with Christ. I have been nailed to the cross with Christ. Uh -huh. So I am not the one living now. Wait. Did you hear the Bible? What did he say? I am not the one living now. I pray that I will have preachers who are no longer the one living, the one speaking and shouting. I pray that what God longs for is for Christ to find a space for in our mortal body so that he can do his work in and through us. Baba Ridon. It is Christ living in me. It is Christ living in me. I still live in my uh -huh. body. Yes. But I live by faith in the Son of God. He is the one who, live, who loves me and gave himself to save me. Thank you, sir. Any other version? Bible in present day English. Uh -huh. I have been put to death on the cross with Christ. Yes, sir. Still, I am living, no longer I. Uh -huh. But Christ is living in me. Christ that, is living in me. And that life which I now am living uh -huh. in the flesh, I am living by faith. The faith of the Son of God. Oh. Who in love for me gave himself up for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The other man wanted to read something. What, what were you trying to read? Contemporary English. C-E-V. Yes, sir. I, ha I have died. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I have died. Uh -huh. But Christ lives in me. For Christ lives in me. And I now live by faith in the Son of God. Yes. Who loved me <laughs> and gave his life for me. Thank you. I have died. <laughs> it's no longer I that's living. But Christ lives his life in me. So where is the amplified man? Amplified. That is in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live. It's no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. But Christ lives in me. The life I live, the life I live now in the body, I yes. live by faith. Uh -huh. By adhering to relying on and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Amen. What is this crucified life that we are talking about? I no longer live. But Christ is the one doing what? Living his life but in me. The message wanted to read and I said you should wait for us. Can you read now? Message. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. Indeed, 
This is not just a mere talk. I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. Baba, are you, are you hearing that now? Uh -huh. Your ego is no more central. It's not important. Yes, sir. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you uh -huh. or have your good opinion. Uh -huh. And I am no longer driven to impress God. I'm not. Uh -huh. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me now. The life you see me living is not mine. The life you see me living now is not my life. But it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. Did you hear what we are talking about? I am not going to go back on that. Don't go back on that. <laughs> Don't go back on that. That is the life we are talking about. That it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. My ego is no more central. Forget about yourself, sir. You are dead. It's no more important whether you impress people or not. Can a dead man impress somebody? Why are you on the pulpit just to impress people when you are no longer here? And why is it that you are struggling to, to, to claim a right when you are no more there? You are dead. Those who have come to experience this, they are the only people, sir, who are free to carry Christ everywhere. They are the only people that it doesn't matter whether they ate, whether you greeted them or not. That's, they, are not they are not living to impress you. They are not even living, struggling to, to prove a point. They are dead. A man who is dead, can, you, can, can a dead man fear death? Talk to me now. I'm dead. We will not promote you. And so what? I'm dead. I'm dead to promotion. I'm dead to demotion. I'm dead to applause. I'm dead to abuse. I'm only alive now because Christ lives in me doing what he wants to do. Would this be where we could stop for today? Can we conclude at this point and say, yes, Lord. If this is what you did at Calvary to terminate my old man so that it is no longer I. I, 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 I. No more. It's Christ now who lives his life doing his work pursuing his own glory but in my mother body and that passage that we will have loved to now read to connect it to show that this is a daily matter daily experience such that it is not what human nature tells you to do now. That human nature, what has happened to it? Crucified. It's dead. It will be what Christ, the living Christ, who is now in me. That's what will matter. It is the one I'm carrying to the pulpit. It is what he says that now matters. It is him that men must hear, it is him they must see, and it must him they must honor. Not me. Not my name. 
not my convenience, not my pleasure. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. In me, in me, in me. Jesus is the life in me. Hallelujah. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. In me, in me, in me, in me. Jesus is the life in me. Hallelujah. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in When this man came to this point, something was released in them. So you hear Paul constantly saying, God forbid that I should glory in anything except in the cross of Jesus through which I have been crucified to the world and the world is crucified to me. As you see me now, I bear in my body the marks of Jesus Christ. So when he comes to a place, here's a man carrying nothing but Christ and is interested in knowing nothing apart from Christ and him crucified in the people. If we are going to preach well, this must be your experience. And so this morning, we're going to pray again and then we shall go and be alone with God. When you get to be alone with God this morning, because we are going to have some more minutes than we had yesterday, and I'm asking you to do two things there. First, the cross of Jesus Christ was God's mystery for my deliverance and yours. When he went to Calvary, it was our old man that he carried to be nailed there. And he did that so that we will no longer live, but Christ will be the one living his life but in you. And at the cross, I want you to know that everything is finished. All that must emanate from your life now will be out of that experience of Christ at Calvary for you. When you get onto the place of prayer, anything that belongs to Mr. Flesh, anything, all those things that you used to brag about, Paul said, all things that were gained to me, what did they become now? rubbish. Honestly speaking, and I, I want to tell you the truth. Though. May God help you to see the glory of Christ and the glory of what he did at Calvary. It is then you will see that all the things that we used to brag about, they are useless. Nothing. Nothing. We bragged about many things. We bragged about age. We bragged about our, where we come from. We bragged about, what is the meaning of that? A dead man. Dead. The glory that we are seeing now is Christ in you. Is that what the Bible said? It said Christ in you. The hope of glory. 
if it is Christ now that lives in me that everything that anybody says to me or says about me it doesn't matter again all that matters is Christ and him crucified inside of my life are there people that you have kept malice about the man that used to keep malice what has happened to him now crucified is dead even before we finish just take your pen or your text and text the person and say brother the man that was quarreling with you died he's finished your wife that is not here please call her and say I'm sorry the very very aggressive man what has happened to that aggressive man here he died you are carrying another life home which life would that be Christ himself Jesus living his life doing his work but in you everything that cannot pass through the cross must be buried at the foot of the cross are you hearing me everything this is how to walk into this crucified life that will bring power bring authority bring glory and bring effect on the ministry we hereby discharge please rise with me as we pray we'll pray for this few minutes and then you will now go to be alone with God for 20 minutes I just want you to be there with God and say Lord this thing that you are beginning to do in my heart this thing that you are beginning to show me this life that you are pointing at even though I've been a preacher for 10 years or for 15 years or for 20 years it has been my struggle the man that struggles has come to the end today as to say it is finished Lord by faith I also agree with you it is finished would you like to say to God thank you for the cross thank you for going to Calvary thank you for accepting for the, the corner of wheat to fall down otherwise there will have been no way for the prince of this world to be cast out there will have been no way for the judgment of this world. There will have been no way for men like me and you to be drawn to God. Lord, thank you. Do you know that at Calvary, all the record of our sin and our misbehavior was cancelled and nailed to the cross? Do you know that at the cross, all the ancestral spirits, all the ancestral covenant, everything that people used to say, and they tie your umbilical cord and all of those things finished at the cross I want you to know it that there is no such power that can hold you down again there's no such arrangement even if they take your name back onto the family shrine when they call your name they say sorry we can't see it again we can't locate him again he has been translated all we are seeing now is the cross. We are only seeing the cross. We can't see the man again. The cross has finished with him. All our records are cancelled. We can't oppress him again. Oh, Moroko Shandaya Bakuria. Look at what the cross brought to you. Even him that had the power of death was disposed. He was discarded. He was disgraced. He was disarmed. Satan would not like me to announce this, but I must announce it. At the cross, you were disarmed. You lost the key. You lost the power. You lost the authority. Who are you, O oh Satan? Where is your sting, O oh hell? Where is your, your power, O oh death? Where are you? Tasabaraba shanda ba 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 ba. Desekete yerebo samba raba shinga ba 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 ba. Inta ku 
kuskalika ndio ya makando robo sikila when the master say it is finished it is finished it is finished it is finished look at this up and down up and down up and down yesterday you were under an oppression of a demon last week they were pushing you it is finished declare it at the cross it finished it finished zabara bashandaba the enemy within was abolished the enemy without was cancelled father we thank you for the cross thank you for going to the cross if the prince of this world had known they would not have crucified the lord of glory look at every chain on your neck broken it is finished but the greatest thing at the cross is the exchange of his life no longer you going home but Christ living his life in you wanting to show forth his glory in your life father thank you thank you this morning thank you thank you for what you are doing now thank you for the work that you completed at Calvary hallelujah 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 thank you Lord it is finished it's finished father we ask you that as we go now even to be alone with you and to press this matter the light of your glory will shine you will bring the scenes of calvary before our eyes the liberty that broke forth at calvary the power that emanated out of the cross the power that raised him from the dead that same power will search through your people from this afternoon in the name of jesus christ it is finished holy spirit please shine the light upon our hearts and let this lead to a greater commitment unto carrying Christ's life about the crucified life preaching and bearing about Christ's life to help men out of their bondage in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed Amen that is the word of God coming to us fresh by the grace of God I want to believe that you follow the instruction God has brought to us and you are careful to note the issues raised together as it concerns our victory, concerns our deliverance, as it concerns every one of us in the Christian faith. I want to believe that these are not casual things. These are details of the revelation of the truth that you need to lay hold upon so that you will really experience what Jesus accomplished for you on the cross of Calvary. So that Easter will not just be a time of celebration, we pray that the issues we have raised here and the prayers uh, we have been led to pray, we continue to be strong upon your hearts as you go back, as you lay down to rest. Please go through these things again. And continue to pray your prayer at your home and at your convenience. Talk to God about these things. Don't just hear it. Seal it up in prayer that the Holy Spirit will make it a reality. We shall continue with this meeting. The last segment of it will be coming up tomorrow again. We ask that you will come out again and join us as we take the final slot on these instructions that the Lord is bringing to us. Help us extend invitation to others who may like to get a similar understanding and experience victory in their lives.
If you need counsel, prayer over any of these issues that the servant of the Lord raised, uh, you can reach us uh, on our one to one on one counseling link, uh, plus two three four eight zero two one six eight two eight 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 three plus two three four eight zero two eight one six eight 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 three we shall get in touch with you and we will trust god to help us share deeper fellowship one on one tomorrow we shall continue with this meeting the same time the same platform by the grace of the lord thank you so much and god bless you